Jesus said, and why you did, and why do you take thought for the morrow? Consider, consider the lilies; they toil not, nor do they spin. Yet God clothed, so clothes them, that even Solomon in all his splendor was not as beautiful as the lilies. In other words, God does it for them. They don't have to do anything. Consider the ravens, the sparrows. They gather not into his barns, that God feeds every one of them. So if you take this at face value, all your needs are going to be met by God. All, all of them. All of them. Well, Jesus, I've got a need that you're not meeting. And I'm pointing my finger and asking you, are there exceptions, are there exceptions to your rule that God will take care of you? Or are you just lying? I cannot sleep at night without this. Without the transitory. I cannot. I will not get a wink of sleep. It doesn't matter whether I sit on the couch and read. Which is kind of impossible to do because even with reading classes I can't see shit. And I curse God for this. Nothing I do. Drink some soothing tea. Nothing I do makes me able to sleep. I just lie into it. I'm, I, God, if I, if I start slurring my birds, I curse the throne you sit on. I curse you, God. I'm, I'm speaking slow. I can't think fast. I curse you, God. Yeah, nothing I do. I cannot sleep without this. Now, Jesus, were you lying? When he said, oh, don't do anything. God will do it for you. Because if I did not have disability in the SSI, if somebody didn't have to, if I did not have Medicaid, I'd have to work my ass off just to afford these pills so I could fucking sleep. If I don't take two of these every night, I don't sleep. And moreover, I cannot sleep if it's not an ideal place to sleep. Bed, pillow, covers. Maybe some white noise. The bed has to be perfectly comfortable. I was flying back from LA a couple of days ago. I had to leave at seven at night. So I, I so I all night long I cannot sleep on that fucking airplane. God, where the hell were you? You didn't provide you didn't give me sleep. So fuck you, God. I curse you. God, I cannot sleep on that airplane. I got back. My mama had bought a new bed for three hundred dollars. I slept on it. I got in that bed. I tried for a long time. I could not fall asleep. I finally got mad at mom and dad, and yelled, and they brought my old bed back in for the trash, and finally got two hours of sleep. After going thirty six hours without sleep, I got uh, two hours of sleep. I woke up. I went to bed. Sometime after one, woke up a uh, quarter to four and lay in bed till eight, unable to sleep the rest of the time. And that's after I took three of these treasures. God, Jesus, are there exceptions to what you said in the Sermon on the Mount, or did you lie? Or are you even real? Why in the hell are you not giving me sleep? This issue. I, for every sleepless night I ever have to go, I curse the Holy Ghost. I went through a period in 2018-19 where I had, I had denied Jesus. And I experienced exquisite torment. Never, do, never ever will I deny Jesus again. But when I have a sleepless night, I get so terrified, I get so angry. I almost break, reached the breaking point where I will deny Jesus for sleep. And but don't and you do gooder, holier than thou righteous people. Don't say this is the test from God. 
you'll get a reward for having God to take his reward and shovel it up his ass. I'd rather have sleep and get no reward in heaven. Besides, I can understand suffering sleepless nights if I'm being persecuted for Jesus. But just daily living, uh-uh, God can go fuck himself. I will not. I refuse. I harden my neck. I will not. I do not accept this God. Take your rewards and shove them up your ass. I, I'd rather have sleep every night. Enough sleep, too. You see, when I was... It's part, it's part old age. And I curse God if I don't look young. It's part anxiety. Psychosomatic. I got this terror. I'm terrified. What the fuck is that? Is that a ghost? I'm terrified that there's really no life after death. It terrifies me. I think something over there is getting pissed off. Shut the fuck up. Ever since I was in seventh grade, I was terrified of death being oblivion. Nothing. Lights out. I remember laying in a wake in bed. Butterflies racking my stomach. Almost wanting to cry. And I knew that if there's no life after death, then the sleep I'm about to experience is just a foretaste of the final everlasting oblivion. The unconsciousness of sleep was a foretaste of the eternal everlasting unconsciousness when you die. But since I was young, since I had a body that was resilient, I was still able to get enough sleep. My exact, uh, my my body's ability to sleep was stronger than my anxiety. But but in 1997, I would lay in bed, butterflies racking my stomach. What if there is no life after death? And I'd lay in bed for two, three hours before finally going to sleep. Come 2013, when Obama won the re-election, now I was terrified that the United States was fixing to go bankrupt and come to the end. Moreover, there's the mind prophecy that the war would end in 2012. I went two sleepless, sleepless nights, unable to sleep a wink from the terror. So finally they put me on uh, Ativan and then transferred me later to Lorazepam. God, I say this to you, God, from the heart. If you do not pay, take me back to the place where I can sleep every night without without having to take any medicine, then I curse the Holy Ghost. Jesus, if I cannot sleep every night without medication, then your words and the Sermon on the Mount are shit. Propaganda. And I curse God for lying to me. I curse God for not answering my prayers because I'm doubting whether he's real. They've proven that the stories of Moses and the Exodus and Adam and Eve never happened. So I'm doubting God. And God, until you... I want something that's real, 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 real. I don't want some beautiful philosophy. I read some of the Judas philosophy and they tell beautiful stories. Such beautiful stories. About how fiery angels, the Torah, God speaking to men. But what is so beautiful, beauty, you, you, uh, you want it. Except for one thing, did it really happen? Is it real? Because like Tina Turner said, God, if, and if you, and if, uh, God, I'm telling you, God, if it, and if it's not real, I do not wish to feel. Why can't you be good to me? Jesus, if Jesus is real, I want him. But if Jesus is not real, if he's not the historical Jesus, if he was not born of the virgin, if he did not die and shed his blood on that cross for my sins, if he did not live a sinless life, 
then Jesus can go fuck himself. If that's not if Jesus is not all the way above, then I deny him. Jesus, are you real? Or are you the personification of goodness? Are we projecting our perception of goodness without any lie goodness, pure goodness, without any bad? Are we projecting our concept of light without darkness onto you? And is this uh, the universe's way to get people to love one another so that the human race can propagate itself for as long as possible without going extinct because people are, well, if the people don't believe in God and Jesus, they'll be fighting one another, stealing from one another. Because let's face it, if there's no God in Jesus, I will steal from big business, not from individual people, because I want people to like me. And people, and if I'm not truly good, I don't deserve to be liked and loved by people. But I would not mind stealing from big business. I would not mind hurting my enemies, stealing from my enemies, my true enemies. I would not mind acting like an Adolf Hitler to people who don't like me. And treat me accordingly. But I want to be like. I want to be like Pablo Escobar. The nuns in Colombia. Loved him to death. The nuns. Because he gave money to them. To support them. In their Catholicism. He was kind to them. He was kind to their children. He'd hug their children. But he killed the drug dealers. Is it any different. From killing the rattlesnake on your front porch. Or the cockroach in the kitchen. That's all they are. Go ahead. Kill them. All the people who want to hurt me. Or uh, take from me. To me they're just rattlesnakes. And to me it is a good thing to kill them. The rattles It's a good thing to kill the rattlesnakes and the cockroaches. That way they can't hurt you anymore. But the other people. The human beings. I want to love them. I want them to love me. I want to see them happy. I do. Old woman of the road rally music convention. She was walk, used to walk her walking slowly, but she was so happy. And he said, her, sort of her and her husband, they look, they look so loving that I want to cry. I just, I, it made me so happy to see that woman happy. <laughs> I, man, if I could, I'd make her able to walk again without having to use that walker. And being able to, I'd make her able to leap and run. God bless that woman. But, my, but, but, the, but those people in Inglewood, California, who would not call me a cab, even though I told them I needed to get to the airport in two hours or I'd miss my fight, those, those young people there who would not care for me, I hope they die in a mass shooting. People like that, the people like in Inglewood, if that's gonna, I hate it when good people die in mass shootings. I hate it. But when people like the people in Inglewood, you say hi to them and they just walk on, snub the nose of you. It's people like that that I wanted. People like the people like that die in a mass shooting. I wash my hands and say hallelujah. This world is too overpopulated, anyways. I'm in favor of exterminating people who do not love. And people who are not kind. And people who are not good. I'm all in favor of exterminating those type of people. The people who, the people who will not help me in my time of need. That's why Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. According to Jeremiah. They will not help the stranger. So those people in, and so those people in Inglewood, California. Who will not call the cat for me. If there is another mass shooting. I hope they're the victims. I I really mean that. Oh, this is so Christian. Well, where the fuck is Jesus when I need him? Until Jesus makes himself real to me, he can go fuck himself. Until he alleviates my doubts, he can go fuck himself. If Jesus is not real, then I, the word I give these words from Tina Turner to him. If God does not give me my sleep every night, I curse the Holy Ghost.
Give me a second. Okay, the, these words are for God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost. If Jesus is not, if Jesus is not real. Hold on, hold on, give, give me a second. Give me a second. Yeah. Give me a second. God. I can't feel. I should. God, Jesus, if you're not real, if your love for me is not real, in action, if you don't, you not give me my goddamn, if you not give me my sleep every night, if you're not real, Jesus, I don't care how beautiful your know, Christianity is, Jesus, God, if you're not really real, if you were not born of the virgin. If you are not sinless, if you are not son of God, if God is not Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, then I I, I, I echo Tim 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 Turner's words to you right here. And this words is especially for you, Jesus. you God for not being able to sleep I curse you God for not be making me a good looking guy you know this is my heart's desire and if I, if I do not become a good looking guy I curse the Holy Ghost <laughs> 